Hi, I'm Sangeeta Banerjee, the tech journal from CoinGram. As mentioned earlier that we would be coming up with interesting interview sessions with eminent personalities in the field of cryptocurrency and blockchain to provide you with a clearer insight about all the concepts related to this field. So here we are with the first interview. In today's interview, we have with us Dr. Lucas Sol, who is a physics professor at the Hepeng University of Technology, China. He is also a research scientist at Vermont Secure Computing. In the interview, he will be sharing with us his insights about the recent trends and developments in this field. So let's hear out from him and learn about all the recent trends and developments. Hello. So, we are ready for the interview. Uh, yeah, I think so. How, how, how are you doing? I'm doing good. So, we were very excited for the day that we will connect with you. Hey, thank you. Yeah, me too. Okay. And nice to finally uh, see you. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to know that what made you want to create the concept of Woodcoin? Ah, uh, yes. So, uh, Woodcoin is... Um, really, there's one problem that it addresses, which is the issuance of currency, the, the money supply curve, the uh, how much new currency is issued over time. And in the Bitcoin model, that curve uh, rapidly uh, drops off so that when we get to about 2032, about, there will be 0.75 Bitcoin per block. And, and what happens then, and it, it drops... It drops by half every four years. The halving period is 210,000 blocks. In and the issue there is that as the reward for the miners goes down, the network has to be supported by fees. And it's unclear uh, how that will work. When the fees went up a couple, uh, six months or so ago, uh, a lot of people were, were scared off and driven into using other coins. So when the Coinbase reward drops that much, it's, it's not clear what will happen. So Woodcoin addresses that by making a slower uh, release curve. It's a logarithmic curve that uh, money supply follows. This would be a, a money supply curve or an issuance rate. And um, that's the primary uh, motivation with this project is to use a more long-term issuance curve that that still rewards early adopt adopters but also uh, maintains a substantial coin base reward long into the future without um, substantial inflation in other words we still have a capped supply there'll never be more than 28 million logs um, there's a, a few other technical differences that were, were uh, interesting to pursue about Woodcoin, but that's the primary objective. Uh, did you follow my explanation? Yes, I, I like found the concept of Woodcoin very interesting. Ah, okay, good. So, you've been living in China. So, I how is the... Like, you have been working over there. So, how is the adoption of public coin? Like, is Bitcoin legal or illegal, or there is some issue with Bitcoin in China? Yeah, that's that's a uh, great question. When I first uh, came into China, it was about 2013, and there was a lot of headlines. China bans Bitcoin, and uh, a lot of fuss, a lot of uh, what they call FUD uh, on this topic, and... Oddly enough, it was actually one of the easiest places I'd ever been to uh, to go in and out from Bitcoin to fiat. I was able to to um, move from Litecoin and from Bitcoin into a, uh, a local person's ATM card within an hour using these exchanges. Um, Bitcoin is not illegal. Uh, it's the it's a little tricky to know exactly what the laws are in all the places of China, just as it is anywhere in the world, but I think in China in particular. Uh, but from all the people that I've talked to, it's, it seems that it enjoys a status as a collectible. Uh, a shopin, I believe it's called. And it, it's like a, a jade bracelet or a, an antique. So you have it's legal to collect it, but it's, it's not a... Uh, 
a um, official currency. So if you if you have a debt, you are obligated to accept Renmin B uh, in as repayment for that debt. Okay. So, what are your predictions about the government regulations in the field of cryptocurrency trading, exchange, mining? Ah, the uh, government re regulations in China or uh, any. Like most Elsewhere. of the countries, they have restrictions and impositions on this concept. So, like your general predictions, like what holds in the future? Yeah, well, there will be some some friction, but generally, it seems as though people are slowly um, starting to make a transition. Uh, it's there. Uh, we, I, I certainly hope for a softer transition, and we see first ten years here has been uh, a relatively soft transition. We're not seeing um, huge uh, disruptions, and, and we don't have to. I think that there are many governments have have uh, certainly the individuals involved in the governments are using these technologies, using these currencies. Uh, we have. People accepting them for for certain things, uh, not for everything, but eh, these things take time, and it, it it makes sense that they should take time. If anybody jumps right in without you know due diligence, then that's perhaps even even worse. So, have, uh, people are slowly waiting for this thing to build momentum and to have confidence to use it. Um, there there will be more regulations of. Of securities, of course, and it, mostly the existing laws already work. We have anti-fraud laws. We have anti-security fraud. We have um, courts that are are uh, set up for theft and various uh, legal issues. That, um, in, in general, you don't need a whole separate set of regulations just because you have a new asset class. Um, but there will be more, as, as there's more and more money in these various organizations, it will be uh, gone after more frequently by regulators. I think that's fair to say. So you have been in this uh, field of cryptocurrency. So do you have any favorite software tools for using the public coins? Ah, uh, yes. Great question. I, I like... Um, I usually recommend to people to start out with a, a smartphone wallet because that's easy way to start using you know small quantities of of currency of transferring money and uh, I like uh, bread wallet for the iPhone. I don't use a Mac products myself, but I'm told that's a good one. Loaf wallet okay. for the uh, Android platform. I like to use Mycelium. It's also the um, Original Bitcoin wallet by Andreas Schildbach is still works well. So those are those are great tools to, to have and to use. Um, Coinomi has a nice wallet. Um, there's a Litecoin wallet. There's a Woodcoin wallet for Android. Uh, when it comes to the PC, we have some small uh, spending wallets like Electrum, popular one. We have, um, and, and then we have tools uh, for uh, creating addresses. One thing I really like to recommend is bitaddress.org and, and their um, collection of tools. It's not, it's not a, a website, it's just a, a page that has tools on it for generating addresses, manipulating them. It's really good for understanding Bitcoin and for using uh, paper wallets, bitaddress.org. And then we have coinbee.in, another great similar site. These things run on offline computers as well. You download the site and you can use it on an offline computer for added security. Uh, of course, there's the full node software, Bitcoin Core, and various uh, forks of it that are um, also good for, for getting to understand the system. It's a little more serious undertaking to use those. I wouldn't recommend them for first-time users, but they're... Uh, Definitely crucial for the ecosystem, including the the Woodcoin, uh, Woodcore, and the Woodcoin um, standard standard full node. Um, what other tools should I recommend? 
It's good to be familiar with uh, GPG. It's good to use Linux. A, Bitcoin is part of an open source movement, and so getting familiar with these tools is important. Uh, that, that's too many already, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, so there are also many celebrities who are into this field of cryptocurrencies. Do you have any favorites among them? Ah, uh, yes. Um, of course, uh, Andreas Antonopoulos has maintained a, a great profile. A lot of the uh, celebrities in this field have uh, fallen in favor. Uh, perhaps this is something that happened to many celebrities in the other period of them as well. But um, he's been a great educator. Uh, a lot of there's a lot of great uh, people also, you know, Gavin Andreessen was um, sort of the famous as the leader of the project after Satoshi stepped down. And he, he uh, did, did quite well, I believe, in not uh, abusing his power and in, in warning people about some of the problems. Um, well, there's um, a, a number of people I, I look at. Max Kaiser, he does great. His show is great. He, um, there were a, a lot of people, uh, you know, Roger Veer is another celebrity. He doesn't quite speak as well as I think he used to because he's caught up in a number of uh, petty arguments, but... Uh, did say some good stuff. You got guys like Rick Falkvinga. Uh, he was at the first uh, Bitcoin conference, which I attended in Czechoslovakia in uh, 2011. We have um, uh, uh, the organizer of that was Amir Taki, another big name. Um, I could go on and on about different names. Uh, do you have anyone in particular you'd like me to talk about? Uh -huh. No, I just wanted to know about hear about your favorites. Yeah. Um, this guy, um, Peter Peter Woolley, is a big big name in the Bitcoin Core community. He's he's not a, a great public speaker in my opinion, but his code inputs have been important. Um, there's uh, a couple a couple Chinese celebrities, of course, Jihan Wu, um, who. Uh, yeah, he's uh, certainly a, a force to, to know and to uh, understand the, the mining industry. Um, there's a lot of people who've stepped, stepped uh, out of the spotlight. A guy called, called himself Joe Tong. There was a musician who uh, did a lot of Bitcoin talks. I really loved his stuff. I would hope that he would come back. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll stop there. Okay. So I am like interested to know that what are you currently working on? Ah uh, yes, so uh, a number of projects. Um, there's in, in addition to uh, wood updating Woodcorn Wallet into uh, and adding a, a tokenization function. There's also some um, some work I've been involved in towards uh, making a a small exchange. Uh, I've also been working as a consultant for a few projects. Uh, one is, is a, a stable coin called uh, Vault, okay. and that's a um, gold-backed dollar pig stable coin. Interesting project. I like the people involved. Um, I've also been working uh, on some non-coin-related projects. I have a uh, professorship in... Uh, Electronic Science in the uh, University of Technology, Hopeg, China. The, the Woodcoin projects that are underway um, are mostly about improving wallet functionality. There's really been no, no network protocol changes, but there also have been a number of people um, approaching some of the team to do marketing and uh, so some of that might happen. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. It's, it hasn't been a priority. Seems like you have lots of things ahead of you. Ah, uh, yeah, probably too much to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, you know, better than the alternative. <laughs> like I will be personally looking forward to the next updates on Woodcoin. Like, ah, excellent. When they release. 
That's that's great to hear. Thank you. Yeah, I don't hear a lot of people who um, know, but I bumped into somebody in a small um, event in uh, in Vermont who had was familiar with Woodcoin and was quizzing me about it. It was it was exciting to sometimes meet people who know about it. <laughs> she was waiting for. The, well. Okay. So, can you tell us something about two crow coin vote famix? Oh yes. Okay. Um, yeah. The first uh, projects I I was working on in this space for Woodcoin. It's uh it changed much. It's a very simple system for for using escrow to secure transactions. It's only set up for Bitcoin at the moment, so that you can have a two parties that don't know each other can create an escrow that is controlled by both of them and do business <coughs> without involving a third party. Okay. Uh, it's, it's done with a multi-signature system called two of two. So if the, uh, the buyer of the good puts the money in, and but the seller can't get it until the buyer signs that he's received So it's a it's a way to stop the seller from just keeping the money and running. A lot of people have used escrow, and a lot of third party escrow services have been very popular, especially in darknet markets, but in other places as well. And um, a lot of these third party escrow services have had trouble either with uh, uh, being uh, shut down, hacked, or call an exit scam. So a lot of people have lost money. We use a service like Two Crow, which is not a service that uh, a, a piece of software. It's not a, uh, I don't know. Right. <clears throat> people use to avoid that kind of loss. Okay. And I would like to know about the price predictions that you have about the crypto tokens that are in the market right now. Ah uh, yes, the uh, the all important price predictions. Uh, I think that the um, it's fair to say that the bear market will continue for a little longer than we expect, and perhaps especially with this altcoins go down further than we expect. But it's also safe to say that <coughs> the bull market will then arrive before we expect it to and the price will go higher than we expect in the end. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the trend is certainly uh, upward when you value versus uh, a fiat currency just because of the mechanics involved. So um, I, I expect the cycles to continue, to continue like this. Yeah. Would you like a specific date uh, price prediction or? <laughs> no, I just wanted the generalized prediction. So the future holds. Okay, you're keeping me safe. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and recently what we have seen is that many companies, many blockchain companies have come up. There have innumerable ICOs that have come up, but most of them have turned out to be unsuccessful. So the commoners have been left confused as to what and where they should invest when thinking about cryptocurrencies. So, what do you have to say about this? Well, yeah, the I, ICOs are are tricky because they are are so easy to to issue, which is a good thing. But it also means that many uh, lower quality projects, shall we say, are are out there and asking for money. So you really have to do your due diligence if you want to invest in a. I like you invest in any company. You want to make sure that they are, you know, have a real model and and have a way to to get your have some return or even to get your money back. Um, so there's a lot of. You know, I'd be very careful with with ICOs for that reason. Uh, and the, the most obvious thing to get involved as a, you know, if, if you have. A little bit of uh, value, fiat currency that 
you don't immediately need to spend would be to start with a little bit of Bitcoin. That's sort of the, the obvious choice. Um, but as you get familiar with the system, you'll like some other coins. A lot of them have a place. There's, there's no way that you could have a ecosystem with only Bitcoin. You need to have lots of coins for a number of reasons. And um, that's, that's a place to start. I think most ICO investors have some Bitcoin. Uh, probably they have some Ethereum. Um, I think uh, I'm, I'm not going to try to plug any particular uh, token or, or security. Um, that, that's where I would begin is with the, the biggest public currencies. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the ones that are not mineable. Go to coinmarketcap.com. They uh, luckily uh, enable you to to um, filter out the non mineable the ones which are more centralized or don't reward uh, participants. So things like Ripple uh, and there's, there's other ones which yeah may have a um, may have a future that is, as a, a company. So it could be a good investment, but in terms of starting with public currency, with cryptocurrency, I would recommend you know, BTC, you know, then some of the other big ones, LTC, BCH, are uh, obvious starting points. And then as you get familiar with it, more comfortable, you get a little more educated, you'll know something something else to, to maybe venture into, depending on how much risk you want to take and uh, how crazy you feel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've read about your uh, that woodcoin.info blog, so they're very interesting. Like people will get to learn more about the different concepts about cryptocurrency that you have highlighted ah. over there. So, do you have any plans about developing or promoting that blog of yours? Okay, I, I heard uh, woodcoin.info. You want to he hear something about the, the blog? Is that right? Yes, and also, if you have, uh, do you have any plans about developing and promoting the same? I I don't really. Uh, there's uh, blogs are a little funny. They are um, usually not that great. <laughs> They're quite I, interesting I, and always informing, I, full of information. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And, and there have been some people over the years who have. Who have come to me and been very thankful and that really is um is fabulous and one thing i've loved about this this space is that there's a, a lot of interest people are are trying to learn and read about it some of my work in uh physics and mathematics has not enjoyed that uh immediate popularity <laughs> okay. uh, so you know something like uh woodcoin was uh, uh Immediately, a, a number of people were, were reading about it and, and responding, and that's, uh, that's great to have that feedback. Some of that, um, some of those pieces on that site are better than others, and some are old, and the links are broken. Um, but I, I should update it, and since you've shown some interest, I, I think I will will do more, more interesting, <laughs> more I'll put on there, <laughs> so that people get to read more from you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the last thing that I would want to ask you is what is your message to the blockchain and crypto enthusiasts, especially from the young generations? Ah, okay. That's um, one. Um, the enthusiasts are already, um, you want me to preach to the choir? <laughs> uh, keep up the good work. I guess um, we need to, more open source projects. We need to avoid the pitfalls of um, of being tempted by greed, to be tempted by petty uh, fights, to follow uh, idiots uh, down down uh, rabbit holes. Uh, we need to not let this stuff get too in the way of our actual life. You know, and a lot of people start trading and and get suddenly you have more money and it, it changes your life worse 
uh, to be honest with you. That's what I've seen amongst a lot of my colleagues. Uh, so, you know, maintain, keep an idea of what you want to do and, and pursue that and, and let these things be a tool to help you rather than something to distract you and, and get you involved in, in, in who knows what. Uh, perhaps it wouldn't be what you originally intended. Um, there's, there's a lot of talk of uh, co-opting the space. Um, you know, any anything where there's money involved is, is uh, you know, will attract uh, idiots like flies to shit. So, <laughs> so it's, it's um, something to be, be aware of. But uh, you know, most people know this stuff already. This is not new with uh, cryptocurrency. <laughs> But the, uh, the purity of the uh, non-counterfeitability is, is still there with these things. And as long as you can maintain that, it, it, will, it will grow. Um, and there's no way to, that it's not maintained you know, in terms of the core projects, public currency. So it's really, it's on a track of its own. We just got to encourage people, encourage new users and Encourage people to accept it. Get people to understand why why accepting fiat currencies is is a huge problem, and it's worth talking about that all the time. And tell people get it, and then they are uh, much better off. Thank you, Dr. Saul. We had a great conversation with you, and I hope that we get to connect with you soon, so that we can learn more from you. Hey, uh, thank you. I, I hope to collaborate with you more in the future as well. Thanks for your interest and uh, let me know how I can be of service. Thank you for giving us your time as well. You've been very busy these days. Thank you for making time for us. Thank you. My, my, my great pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. Actually, okay. a good night. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.